The goal of this podcast is to help you break in and thrive in advertising. And we do that every Tuesday by sharing the stories and advice of those rocking it on the other side. This week, you will hear from Deanna Dorsey Calloway, and I've been excited for this episode for a while. She is the CEO and co-founder of Creative Ladder. Deanna explains how she, Ryan Reynolds, and David Greiner developed this nonprofit to connect, elevate, and inspire a more inclusive generation of creatives. One fact we cannot ignore is that four out of five creative professionals of color didn't know their careers existed when they graduated high school. So the Creative Ladder strives to make creative careers more accessible to all. Creative Ladder helps students from all backgrounds learn about creative careers and offers leadership training for those beginning their journeys. Deanna will talk about her story, her business, which is District of Clothing, and how we can break into advertising with the help of Creative Ladder. And she tells us what, what Ryan Reynolds is really like. And spoiler, he's great. To connect with Deanna, head to creativeladder.org and listen to the end of this episode to get her contact information. Now on with the show. This is the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast, and as usual, I'm your accomplice, Gino Schellenberger. Kick it, Mikey. Deanna Dorsey Calloway, welcome to the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. Thank you so, so much for coming on. I'm super pumped to have you on. How are you doing today? I'm good, Gino. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really honored and excited to be with you too today. Thank you. Amazing. We have a lot to talk about, but first and foremost, let's talk about your role and what you're doing. You are the co-founder and CEO of the Creative Ladder. Is that correct? That is correct. It's such a blessing and such an honor. Um, it's it's wild to think that we are nearing six months of um, since announcing and launching. Um, but yeah, here we are. Um, could not be more excited to be a part of this team. Amazing, with Brian and and uh, and and Griner. Yep. And for background, I interviewed Griner back when he was at Adweek. Great mentor of many probably thousands of people in the industry. So it definitely- The whole Twitterverse, yes. All Twitter, exactly. <laughs> I wonder, is he still on Twitter? You guys, are you still rocking on Twitter? I don't know what uh, that- uh, Yes, as of today, think, December think, 5th, we're still on Twitter. Um, I think people are still on it. I don't think people have ditched out just yet. I don't think yeah, there's any- I, I don't know when this is going to go live, but I, I hope that mm. there's still a Twitter when it does. Sure, um, yeah. You know, for me, Twitter is very much a global public utility that mm -hmm. um, that we absolutely need, that for we sure. absolutely need in this world. Absolutely. Um, so you mentioned it's you, Griner, and then Ryan, and obviously we all know that's Ryan Reynolds. So definitely super interesting there. I want to get the whole dynamic, how you guys work together, what the vision of the organization is, first and foremost, because I don't think we've addressed that yet. So yeah. give us the give us the high level explanation of the creative ladder, the nonprofit. Yeah. Our mission is to connect, inspire, and elevate an inclusive new generation of creatives, um, creative industry leaders. Our goal is just as a whole is to make creative careers more accessible to all. And we want to make the creative industry, various creative industries, specifically advertising and marketing, look much more like the community it serves, the people that it serves. Um, my mission here, my personal mission here is to make sure that folks understand that it, you know, it, it's not a talent deficit. It's an absolute opportunity deficit. And so we want people to understand that if you're looking for someone to fill this particular role, we have we have those people. They just might not know about the these opportunities, these various different mm -hmm. um, companies and organizations and agencies. And so we're here to help kind of bridge that gap. Um, I was first introduced to the concept of Creative Ladder nearly two years ago. Um, if you can go back to when the world was on fire, spinning in reverse, and just 
totally off its axis um, in the summer of, of 2020, specifically mm-hmm. August 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan Reynolds was speaking. He was the keynote for Brand Week. Like everything else in the world, it had gone virtual. Mm-hmm. Not only was Ryan speaking at Brand Week for Ad Week, our dearly beloved David Greiner was interviewing him. And they had a lovely conversation um, prior to their actual um, event, to their actual um, interview. Mm-hmm. And as I now know, um, and I try to make sure everyone fully understands this, you know, Ryan is a human with a huge heart and he leads with his heart every step of the way. Mm-hmm. His thought was, there's lots happening in this world. How can we make this event more inclusive? I would love to invite 100 generally marginalized creatives to attend. It's been told to me that I was a part of that list fairly early on. Um, I attended n- not just Ryan's keynote, but the entire, as many sessions as I could during that week. It was a wonderful um, way to just kind of block out what was happening outside our doors and on the news. And it was a great way to sort of, sort of pivot towards productivity mm-hmm. during that time. Um, and... I sent a couple of tweets saying how much I loved it. Um, that's August. It's my understanding <laughs> that Ryan and, and Grind were kind of pinging each other like, hey, man, that was amazing. We had 100 generally marginalized folks attend. Everyone's getting really pumped about your keynote. You know, what else can we do? At this time, he already had kicked off GEI. And um, they started kind of pinging back and forth on the concept of doing a version of that for advertising and marketing. We now know that to be Creative Ladder. Um, They first reached out to me, I believe in like October, November. And I was Mm -hmm. like, I need to call you back. I'm trying to plan my COVID wedding ceremony. Um, And when I eventually did call back, it's like, uh, it was Griner. And um, he's like, so how are you? How's everything going? Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, me and Ryan Reynolds went you to be you know our third co-founder in this organization that we are we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks and um I I very vividly remember being like huh you know like I couldn't even say excuse me or pardon me like what you know huh Mm -hmm. um and I mean we literally kicked off the three of us working virtually like everyone else at this time um this time two years ago in 2020 so december 2020 we kicked off um working and we were meeting every week um virtually um ryan as often as he could based on his um because i think they were they were still shooting and doing a couple of things at times so as often as he could meet with us he, he would and um you know we started forming our board we started forming the concept of creative ladder and thinking about the people that we wanted to serve. Mm -hmm. Um, And our thought was we want to serve demographics that are generally just kind of not included. Um, And how can we make, how can we make people know that these incredible careers exist? How can we help people who are already in these amazing creative careers continue to move forward in their career? Mm -hmm. And how can we bridge the gap between advancement and education and outreach? Love it. And I, I think on your site here, I'm looking at the about section it, for the recruit, the next generation section here, it says 78% of non-white creative professionals say they were unaware their careers even existed when they graduated high school. 78%. That is 78%. And that's so high. I mean, I personally found out through Mad Men that I wanted <laughs> to be in advertising. So I, and I just watched it. That was how I figured it out. But that number is so high. So you guys are going to, or you plan to go to high schools? Like, what's the what's the game plan to spread that awareness to those uh, 78% people that might not be aware of these careers? Like, what's the, what's yeah. the strategy? Yep. Our outreach will be both um, student outreach for high school students focusing on juniors and seniors. Yep. Uh, again, letting them know that these jobs exist. Letting them know that many of the things that they're doing day to day versus, you know, whether they're on TikTok or Instagram or Snapchat or any of these other platforms that I don't even know about yet. Um, many of the things that they're doing day in and day out on their phones could actually become like a full career with a really mm-hmm. long trajectory. Um, and then also 
creating material so that they can take that knowledge that we're going to share with them, take it home and share with their parents. I know when I was a senior in high school, I got into Villanova University. I told my dad that I wanted to go to Villanova because, and I was going to study communication. And he's like, girl, you've been talking your whole life. We're not, you know, I'm not going to spend X amount of dollars for you to go to higher education to keep talking. Oh my goodness. And, um, I, you know, my mom had not, she graduated from high school and she started yeah. working the day after she graduated. My dad had a different path. He's an attorney. And in mm-hmm. his mind, I was supposed to be the first black woman president, the first black um, woman Supreme Court justice. And I'm like, no, I want to study communication. I want to go into marketing and I want to be a fashion designer. And he's like, so you want to talk and cut? You want to cut, cut and color and talk? Like what, you know, what is this? I didn't, I didn't put my blood, sweat, and tears to have mm-hmm. my daughter, you know, want to color for the rest of her life. And that's a common yeah. conversation that happens with all students, I think, but definitely with um, first-generation students, also with um, many students of color, especially when your parents have done everything that they could in their power to give you the opportunity to to go into higher education. Um, and then I, I feel like I'm rambling on here. but. No. Let me just answer um, with regard to college. We'll be kicking that off uh, next spring. I'm really, very excited to share that we'll be kicking that off at Temple University. Nice. And um, we will have various creative industry leaders come and speak to the advertising and marketing students um, from various different uh, demographics. Understand what these jobs are beyond Mm -hmm. what they might see on TV or might have heard. Tell them about more of these different types of jobs. And it's really, it's, it's representation matters. So when you see someone who looks like you or understands your background, tell you about what it is that they're doing on a day-to-day basis, it really just kind of changes the game. I I love it. What are those materials that you plan on creating? Because where you do something like this in Chicago, I'm in leading like um, high school visits and university visits, and we do panels. We give them at the end of the panel discussion, we'll print out um, a list of job responsibilities and anticipated entry level salaries. Mm -hmm. I think that's super helpful. Yep. Those resources will eventually be on the website, but we will be... um, just sharing materials that they can take back home to their parents, letting mm-hmm. them know like this, you know, you don't have to be a doctor or a lawyer. You can also be whatever the title might be this particular job. I'm so sorry. My dog yeah. is okay. Yeah. You're all good. Yep. Um, I guess then what are the, you say creative careers, mm-hmm. what other th- so what are those careers that you're enlightening these these people about? Is it just advertising, creative roles? You said you did fashion design. I want to get into your background as well too, so don't let me forget. What are you okay. what are you teaching them? What different roles? Yeah, it'll be advertising, design, production, strategy, marketing. I mean, you probably know and can think of more titles than I can, but um, copywriting and mm-hmm. um, project management. I mean, there's so many roles that go into making an advertisement there's so many titles and there's so many people that go into these various different oh, yeah. jobs and it's important that we let people know that these jobs exist that we share you know what's generally expected of them and also that we let people know that sometimes you don't even have to go to college for some of these positions nope yeah, yeah. it's really about you know making people aware keeping them informed and Again, representation matters. So when you see someone doing something, when you see Michael Jackson, when you see Michael Jordan, when you see, I don't know, Beyonce, I don't know. I'm just thinking of the first couple of people that come to my mind. But when you see these people, it makes you say, hey, I want to play basketball too. Um, Hey, I want to sing too. And if you actually can see someone as a designer, I, you know, I, I don't. I've been in this industry, I don't know, 15, 20 years. I don't have a mentor, but what, thankfully I'm creative and what I have kind of concocted as my career is what I've like had in my head, but I've just been failing in public and figuring it out like along the way. And we want to kind of remove some of those barriers and help people climb the creative ladder, you know, Love with it. the community. Definitely. Just sort of tearing down obstacles and helping to rise people up. 
definitely. I, I've told you about this before, but the documentary that um, TTK Harris made, it's called Just Like Me, talks all everything you said. It's just amazing. It lines up so well. It's called Just mm-hmm. Like Me. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll put the link in the bio, but um, amazing. So definitely love the mission there. I want to get into like what the what's the next step. So you just had a great event in New York. Um, my friend, shout out Armando. Uh, he was Hi, there. Hi, Armando. Yes. Yep. Um, he was there. He spoke very highly of it. But give us a recap. What happened? This was like a, one of your first big conferences, correct? Yes, this is our first boot camp. It was on November 5th in New York City. It was hosted at the Conrad. Um, and we had 50 young professionals, rising leaders join us. We had several different speakers, um, again, from various different backgrounds and national mm-hmm. and demographics, excuse me, um, discussed anything from, you know, understanding what your leadership skills are and your leadership style to um, how to deal with microaggressions to how to navigate um, asking for a promotion to how to manage your side hustle while you have a, a nine to five daytime job. It was awesome. In every sense of the word, it still gets me a little bit emotional, even though we're literally a month away from it. Mm -hmm. Um, It was wonderful to be able to gather. It was wonderful to be able to sit in a room with a a bunch of young people who looked like me, reminded me of myself at that time. Everyone was so excited and energetic and feeling very, you know, excited to continue moving forward, but also by the end of the day, feeling a lot more confident in their ability Mm -hmm. of what they already do and to be able to continue moving forward. It was, um, it was a kick-ass day, excuse my language. No, you can definitely swear. That is kick-ass. And do you have like more of those planned out? Are you coming to Chicago? Because we will have more of those planned out. I don't think we have announced the cities just yet, but we will be uh, releasing more dates in the future of various okay. different cities across the United States. Great. Great. Um, yeah. Definitely come to Chicago. It's warmer out. I know. It's yeah. warm. <laughs> Just <laughs> to make tip. everybody. Yeah. Yep. Yes. You know that. Yes. Um, where are you at right now? I didn't ask. Oh, I'm in Maryland. I'm about 20 miles outside of Washington, D.C. It's called Potomac, Maryland. So, DMV baby, DMV, yeah. Gotcha. And Griner is in Alabama, is that right? Mm-hmm. If I remember mm-hmm. correctly. Mm-hmm. Nice. And Ryan but... is on everyone's television screen. Yes, he's everywhere. <laughs> yes, and and LinkedIn. Yes, and LinkedIn, and Twitter, and Instagram. And I think to, for people that might not know, giving some context why Ryan's involved in this, like he obviously has his own agency, correct? And he does his own advertising for his products just can, can you give us like background like why to people that may like, be like wait why is did they say ryan reynolds why ryan reynolds, why would he be involved in this just some background on that too yeah i uh, you know he already had created the um group effort initiative and i forgive me i don't remember exactly when he created it but That's fine. Um, what is that again it, yeah it's it, it's essentially the sister or Mm -hmm. the brother to um, Creative Ladder, but it's really to create a pipeline for members of underrepresented communities to get real experience towards lasting careers within the entertainment industry. So Uh, if you're advertising and marketing their entertainment, Hollywood, um, and that's based in Los Angeles. Okay. It's just, it's a different vertical. It's a different vertical. And again, you know, He's a human who leads with his heart, and I, as I stated when we announced this in Cannes um, at the Bloomberg Media panel, mm-hmm. he has chosen very intentionally to spend his privilege. I mean, Ryan could be spending his time and his the you know attention that he receives mm-hmm. on doing lots of other things and he has very intentionally and and warm-heartedly decided to like push that to help other people move forward which is why i felt um you know really honored and excited to be a part of this when when they first reached out absolutely no it, it says a lot actions speak louder than words right yes 
Yes, and it. not just actions, but like repeated actions. This mm-hmm. is this is who he is, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, especially during a time when uh, you know lots of celebrities are doing the opposite. So it's it's very special to see him not just doing it, but making it. It's it's just very much a part of like who who he is. It's very much a part of his heart. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. We can tell. Um, great. Shout out, Ryan. Um, now, I want to get to you because we kind of skipped over your story here. We got to how basically the context was that you were at Brand Week and Ryan and Griner like hit you up and said, can you join this? But like, what no, was they your background? I didn't need to join. So I had first, so they remember, and maybe I didn't say this clearly, but Ryan was speaking as the keynote. Griner mm-hmm. was interviewing him. And because, again, it was 2020, he asked to invite 100 generally marginalized right. folks. Um, I'm assuming Adweek came up with that list, and I was told that I was on that list. Um, mm-hmm. Prior to 2020 and even just now, um, I would call myself a creative entrepreneur, um, mm-hmm. fashion designer. I have, well, I guess I should take a step before that. I have a uh, creative direction business called Deanna Dorsey Design, where I offered um, pretty much anything creative to my clients, whether it was either design, branding, strategy, marketing, you name it. Anything besides like cutting a tree down, I was mm-hmm. doing it, hustling to to make ends meet. Um, and during the tenure of that business, um, after five years, my time client went on the spending freeze. Okay. I like threw my hands up and was like, okay, now what am I going to do? I'm like all these other statistics on CNN, you know? And yeah. um, my thought was, okay, I need to pivot and do something to help me have like an additional stream of income, which became my little like side hustle that could, I guess. Um, now she's a living, breathing entity, district of clothing. Um, and the creation of that business coupled with Deanna Dorsey design um, allowed me the privilege to have some really amazing partnerships. um, One of which was with Planned Parenthood. um, And I was the creative behind the shirt that some of your, uh, or the campaign rather that some of your listeners might know. Um, it was the Stand with Black Women campaign for Planned Parenthood. That um, was a really amazing project, campaign, partnership, and it um, went viral several times over the course of a few years. Um, and it actually is what connected me to Griner in the first place. And I I think it was 2018. Forgive me, my like pre-pandemic memory is not as spot on as it <laughs> once was. Oh, but yeah. I think it was 2018. I got an award um, as a rising brand star from Adweek. Um, that's Amazing. when I first met David Griner, and um, I, you know, my work thus far has always been about um, lifting people up, sharing purpose um you know trying to inspire others trying to james baldwin jimmy baldwin has this quote which i'm totally gonna mess up but it's um it's something that i believe to be true and very much a part of all of my work and my purpose professionally and it's um you know the artist is supposed to let the world know what they know to be true through their art so um that's what I've tried to have tried to do through my art and design um, and branding and marketing and strategy. And um, I think it, I think it was a good, I, I guess I had been doing a good enough job that, you know, Ryan and, and Griner said, Hey, let's invite Deanna to be a co-founder. Got it. That helps a lot. The context there is super helpful. And interesting. Uh, are you still doing District of Clothing? 
to shoot the clothing does itself. Um, but yes, gotcha. <laughs> she's a living, breathing entity. She, you know, once I moved That's over so nice. to Creative Lab, I had to kind of bring some people on to help it keep keep it moving. Sure. Um, but yes, the Shook of Clothing, the Shook of Clothing dot com, and um, at the Shook of Clothing on all handles, I believe. Um, but the goal there is really just to um, amplify voices of truth and to encourage um, self-love and positivity and um, inspire action. And um, it can be provocative. It can be political. Sure. It can, you know, but again, it's things that are fairly intrinsic to me, but that I want to put out into the world or to really sort of um, encourage people to keep moving forward. I love it. And you have and multiple been, collections uh, here I'm looking at right now. Yeah, it's been, Amazing stuff. Um, thank you. It has been such a blessing um, on pretty much any given day. I can go on social media or go out in the world again, it's like pre pandemic, mm. and like, you know, more so on social media sense, but yeah. Um, and just see people dreaming and doing wearing district of clothing, which um, warms my heart, but it was amazing seeing people during the pandemic, you know, whether they were on Zoom or going to vote or um, wearing their masks and protesting, um, perhaps even getting arrested while protesting. Um, really just, you know, the goal is to continue moving forward with district of clothing, so, so much so that it's just a part of like the, the ethos and like a part of the fabric of being an American and hopefully even beyond where you're just like a human and it's like, Hey, I'm going to vote. I'm going to wear my district of clothing shirt. Hey, I'm going to take my kids to school or, you know, I'm going to rake these leaves in the, in the backyard. I'm going to mm -hmm. choose to wear my district of clothing apparel because it encourages me to be more of myself, to love myself and keep moving forward. Incredible. Thank and you. I like, and I want to touch on the fact that our, like kind of segueing to like the advice portion here of the podcast. Cause you mentioned um, you had your, your own marketing business right you said you did everything there was a spending freeze from your large client and you started to focus on your side hustle this passion project which soon grew into something which you just talked about something amazing um something i too i i try to teach and preach on the podcast in my lecture is to start something on the side like just something that you love it could be nacho reviews for all i care whatever you like to do mm -hmm. show your brand show you're funny like if you're funny and or you some sort of any hobby mm -hmm. what's your take on this like obviously it worked out for you but for the student out there or the aspiring advertiser what's the true importance of a side hustle a passion project is there a difference why should it matter why should they care to start something it's so much work right they're busy with school yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on yeah. or they're doing other stuff they're working four jobs perhaps two jobs why do this yeah, I, I think, first, I think if something has come to you, it's come to you because you have the ability to bring it to fruition. Mm -hmm. And it's not about you. It's about, you know, pushing, putting something into the world that will help us all collectively, like, move forward, right? I think that yep. um, it's important that, and this is how I was raised, that we, or that I, I should say, um, mm -hmm. that I provide a service to my community, but that I also be of service to my community. And so if I can do that through both, if I can do both of those things through the sugar clothing, through creative ladder, through whatever else might come down in, in the in the future, then that's that's the goal. You know, I I don't believe that it is proper to say like, hey, I did it, you can do it too. Cause I think we all have different backgrounds. We all have yep. different um levels of access we all have various different resources but again i think if an idea has come to you it's because you have the ability to bring it to fruition and it's not about us it's about like helping heal the world moving in a, in a you know more progressive state um just think like if i don't know i'm looking here at my ring light just think someone had this idea for a ring light can you imagine if Gino, you had this idea for a ring light and you never created the ring light and I would be sitting here, thank goodness we're not on camera because I didn't do my makeup today, but 
you know, imagine if I was just sitting here in the dark and this was like a, a, a visual podcast too, you know? So it's like, we, what comes to us is, is what the world needs. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I, but I do believe that um, it's important that you get started. Um, I don't think that, you know, we'll generally, we'll never have enough time. We'll never have enough free time. We'll never mm-hmm. generally have like enough money, enough education, enough books, like, put all of those things that can doubt you and stop you put all of that out of your head and your mind and your heart focus on your idea focus on your yourself and your ability to bring that idea to fruition and give yourself you know five minutes a day um i know i've heard people say i don't have five minutes and i say well do you shower you know because you can use those five minutes in the shower and then the next week maybe you you kick it up to seven minutes and you're thinking about this while you're in the shower Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, if you're walking your dog, you have a couple of ideas, you can put it in a voice note on your phone, whatever it might be. um, You know, it's, it's, it can be a beautiful world, it can be a very challenging world. But if you have something that's inside of you, you can change it with like a little bit of Gino, you know what I mean? Like a little bit of yourself. Think Mm -hmm. about this podcast, you had this idea for this podcast. And if you didn't do it you and I never would have met each other think of all the people that you're helping you know who are listening to this podcast that you might never physically tangibly meet but they're impacted by you communicating with others um I just uh I believe in like sharing sharing is caring I do I believe in sharing and I believe in progression and I believe in inspiring folks that's that's what inspired me to do district of clothing too um just being here in the dmv like you can go to brunch or lunch with someone and they're telling you about this amazing idea and then the next time you see them again it's like pre-pandemic life but mm-hmm. the next time you see them one or two months later they've raised money and they've had an event and they've traveled here and it's like whoa like if that's happening it's, it's kind of common in some of these larger cities right but it yeah. might not be as common in some of these smaller towns and i would love to be able to bring that energy that those concepts and ideas to folks who have the ability to bring it to fruition but might not see it or might not you know do it and so with district of clothing the goal was just to amplify the people who are doing it and it didn't need to be like celebrities i try not to do too many like influencers and things Mm -hmm. i wanted it to be like i don't like to use the word customers but our actual customers our actual community members like let's inspire each other by seeing amy wear um, you know, votes for humanity to go vote, and maybe that'll encourage someone else to vote or to vote early or to you know look up their voter registration status. Or um, you know, we saw like during the pandemic, we saw lots of people choosing to wear apparel to protest or on Zooms. And the goal was before you know, let's share with others like what you know to be true and what you want to share to the world. And I never would have imagined that we all would be wearing masks for a few years and you couldn't always talk with people or that you wouldn't always be able to gather, but you can be on social media and wear a shirt that says good trouble. Or you can be um, on a Zoom call with your coworkers and wear a shirt that says dream a doer to, to show people that like you're still in a good positive place during this challenging dark time. Absolutely. I love it. It's inspiring. It really is. Thank um, you. I guess, like, what I'm curious about, like, you're obviously doing such good. Um, For somebody that might be listening, like, I don't have any ideas that can really benefit the world, or who am I to think I can change the world? What would you say to those people? I mean, first, you know, recognize that it's not about changing the world. It's like, it could be the people who lived with you, the people who live next to you. It could be Mm -hmm. the people that you work with. It doesn't have to be something grandiose. I never thought that I would see people in Israel or in London wearing district of clothing. That wasn't my goal. You know what I mean? Like my goal was, yeah, yeah, it it got there. Um, You just, like we say, keep going, keep thriving. But uh, the goal was really to, one, was to like help me make it through the rough months because I had gotten laid off, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, And then during the pandemic, I again needed like to pivot toward productivity 
for like my own sanity to help put food on the table for my family. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was blessed that I had something to pivot to. I think that's something else that a lot of folks probably already are thinking about now and we'll be thinking about more as we move into 2023. We don't know what's going to happen financially. Yeah. We're heading into another election season, you know. Yep. It's great if you have something to pivot toward right. to help because we just don't know what tomorrow may bring. Um, and it doesn't happen, like, you know, numbers are relative. So it, you don't you don't have to think like, oh, I need to make a million dollars from this or, oh, I need to make a hundred thousand dollars for this, or oh, I even need to make a thousand dollars for this. But if you make five or ten dollars toward it and it helps you pay a bill or it helps you, you know, yeah. with your lunch or a happy hour drinks, like, hey, that's that's like you made a difference. And you know, it it will also just show you like what you're more capable of for yourself. Definitely builds self confidence too. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I love it. And I think we talked, I think we covered a lot of great topics. I want to end it with this then. Um, how can people learn more about Creative Letter? How can people reach out to you? I'm curious about the next events. So where do I go other than putting on post notifications for you? I do that. I recommend this now is like putting out like find the guests, go on LinkedIn, put on post notifications, follow them. Super yeah. helpful. But That's anything true. else you might recommend? Yeah. Definitely go to creativeladder.org. Um Please follow us on Instagram and on LinkedIn. Um, I believe it, and Gina can put this in the bio, but I think it's um, Creative Ladder Org. Um, and please also, again, I don't know when this is going live, but we're having an event on December 12th, our self leadership and well being workshop, um, where we will have a virtual event that we can reach many people. So we're hoping everyone will be able to uh, sign online and and, and RSVP and, and join with us. Um, and we're really going to be focusing there on learning the skills and the practices to help alleviate stress and to reduce stress and the things that, you know, young professionals and rising leaders can start implementing into their life to help them continue moving forward in their leadership um, roles. But to also you know, as we think about the end of the year and as we think about the beginning of the year, for us not to be so focused always on our goals, but also on our self, our well-being, on our souls as well. Um, I always forget about that. Yeah, we all do, right? I, <laughs> yeah. I always say, like, you have to put yourself on your to-do list, but you have to put yourself first on your to-do list and also last on your to-do list. Mm. We're going to get some really amazing tools and practices um, from our panel to help us um, figure out ways to, to keep moving forward and not to be so, so incredibly stressed. You know, we were talking about this before we started recording, but um, mental wellness, it's, it's important that we take care of our like physical selves, but we also have to take care of our mental selves too. And in order for us to be rising leaders and, and leaders in the various creative industries, um, we have to remember that um, one doesn't work without the other. So true. you might be feeling great physically, but if you're not feeling great mentally, you're really not going to be able to produce as much work as you might like to. Um, Makes sense. Yes. Uh, so yes, you can find us at creativeladder.org. We have this event on December 12th mm-hmm. um, and you can sign up at creativeladder.org forward slash events with an mm-hmm. S. Um, follow us on Instagram, on Twitter. Hopefully, Twitter's still around when this goes live. Yeah. Um, as well as LinkedIn. Yep. And um, you can find me on all socials at Deanna Dorsey, D I O N N A D O R S E Y. Um, and then Deanna Dorsey.com. Perfect. I love it. Thank you so much, Deanna. This has been amazing. Thank you for teaching us about the creative ladder, and we will be in touch. Hopefully, we, we might be able to work together soon. Yes, Gina, I would love to meet you in person. Thank you so much for your time. I'm I'm really happy that we were able to connect. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this entire episode of the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. 
If you like what you heard, it would mean a lot to us and help us grow and get better guests and better break-ins if you can go to Apple Podcasts and leave us five stars and a small review if you have the time. Be sure to connect with our guests if you like what they said by going to our Instagram at breaking and entering pod. It's all one word, breaking and entering pod on Instagram. We have links to their portfolios and their LinkedIn and they want to connect. So do that. And thank yous. Thank you to Mikey Malarkey, our audio engineer and Buchan Jung, our creative director. Can't do it without you two and a team from the University of Illinois. It's a student team from the agency called AdBuzz, their PR agency, and it's been a pleasure working with them. Thank you all so much, and we will see you next week with another amazing guest.